kids out the back door for class there. Go ahead and head out the back door. If you are heading to VF Kids, go ahead and make your way this morning. Luke chapter 3, verse 2 says, At this time, a message from God came to John, son of Zechariah, who was living in the wilderness. Someone shout out the wilderness. Come on, do it again. Someone shout out the wilderness. So sometime within the last year or so, uh, we spent a couple weeks focusing on the wilderness. The wilderness representing those hard places in life. The places where, where maybe we find hardship or trouble. Those seasons that feel dry. Or if someone asks how we're doing, we say, man, I'm just kind of in a rut. You know what I'm talking about? It can be those moments where we feel like we're wandering or like we're simply making no progress in life. The wilderness can be those places where we just feel delayed or stuck in the loading or in the waiting or maybe even where we feel lost. The wilderness is the valley between the mountaintops. It's the desert, the barren land, the season that we wish would end. Sometimes it feels like discouragement. Sometimes the wilderness feels like testing or being in the fire. But either way, the wilderness can feel exhausting. You can give me a head nod if you know what I'm talking about in seasons of life. So we looked at the wilderness last time. We did so through the story of the children of Israel as God rescued them from generations of slavery under the hand of the Egyptians. God did many miraculous signs and wonders and things for them in the wilderness. He parted the Red Sea. He led them by fire and by cloud of smoke. He provided food every day, delivered them to the promised land and other things that you could read through Exodus. And so when we talked about the wilderness roughly a year ago, we talked about how God's goodness can be found in the wilderness. That in the midst of those seasons in life, we, we get to see God's faithfulness through the moments that feel uncertain and that feel shaky and that feel like things are crumbling. God uses our wilderness seasons of life. And so as the thought of the wilderness was placed upon my heart, uh, thinking of this Sunday, I kind of resisted it a little bit. I'll be honest. I thought, Lord, we just spent a couple weeks talking about the wilderness, but I was surprised to find that was a year ago. How quickly time flies. But I thought, Lord, we already talked about the wilderness. Why are we going back to the wilderness? We already talked about how your provision is found in the wilderness and how your goodness is found in the wilderness. And if you've ever walked through some hard times in your life, you can look back now, maybe not see it in the moment, but you can look back now and say, God was with me in the wilderness. He was with me when I felt like I was wandering or lost or things were falling apart. God's faithfulness was there. So I said, Lord, I don't understand. Well, what is it about the wilderness that we're wanting to go back to and look at? And so this morning, it's a little bit of a different word in regards to the wilderness, but I believe that the Lord has a very, very specific word about the wilderness. Listen, I understand today that this word may not be for every single person. This isn't like a teaching on a subject. This isn't like an exegetical reading through a passage of scripture where then we expand or expound upon the things God is saying. I believe today this is a very specific word for people in the room, for those online, for those listening later. And we're just going to trust the Holy Spirit to speak to us like we do every week, how he needs to speak to us in our life. You give me an amen if you're willing to speak to you today, however he needs to in this house. So this morning, I'm not really sure on a title. You could call this the wilderness call, call the wild. I don't really know the title for today, but, but let's pray one more time. Father, we're thankful today again for your goodness. We're thankful for your grace. We're thankful for the provision that even got us here this morning. Lord, I realize some people in this room fought through hell this week just to get here today. And so, Father, we rejoice, Lord God. We're, us sitting in this room is a victory today, Heavenly Father. We could be anywhere else today doing anything else. But instead, we are in your house, God. And I'm thankful for each and every person, Lord God, that is with us here in person, with us online, and listening later. I pray, Holy Spirit of God, that your presence would be real today as we hear your word, Father. Help me not to say anything that would come from me, but only that what comes from you today, God. And Lord, we pray that we would receive exactly what we need to hear and deposit it into our spirit today, Father, in our lives, that we may grow fruit and be productive for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So this morning, we're going to look at a few different people in Scripture, each of, with, uh, each of which, excuse me, had their own experience in the wilderness. 
and each which experienced the same thing after the wilderness. So we're going to see a pattern today of people in the wilderness, but then something that follows the wilderness or comes out of the wilderness. And I believe in Jesus name, it's going to bless us today and it's going to encourage us today. And our opening scripture already introduced us to one of these people. You maybe know him by the name of John the Baptist, or more accurately, according to scripture, John the Baptizer. So look again at Luke chapter 3, this time verses 2 and 3. The Bible says, At this time a message from God came to John, son of Zechariah, who was living in the wilderness. Then John went from place to place on both sides of the Jordan River, preaching that people should be baptized to show that they had repented of their sins and turned to God to be forgiven. You notice where John was in the wilderness? But do you notice what happened to John in the wilderness? We just read it. He received a word from the Lord and then went place to place, preaching that people should be baptized, repent, and turn to God. Listen, here is the heart of the message today and the pattern that we're going to see over and over through a few more stories. It's that what comes after the wilderness season in your life can typically be a season of ministry. You catch that this morning? What comes out of the wilderness is being used by God. And see, that seems a little bit crazy today because because we look and we go, no, 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 what comes out of the wilderness is me being dead. What comes out of the wilderness is me not making it. What comes out of the wilderness is, is financial stress and marital relational issue and health problems. Like, like we, we, what are you talking about? God's going to use me after the wilderness, but receive this word today. John was living in the wilderness. The Bible says, if you read in other places, wearing clothes that were made of camel's hair and eating locusts and wild honey. Then in the wilderness, in that place, in that moment, God speaks to John. He receives a message from the Lord and he steps into a season of ministering. See, sometimes we think there's nothing after the wilderness. Sometimes we think that we may not even make it out of the wilderness, that the wilderness is going to kill us or that we might not survive. Listen, I get the wilderness can feel too overwhelming sometimes. These seasons of uncertainty that we walk through in life can, can feel too exhausting. They can feel too confusing. The wilderness can feel too discouraging. And sometimes it's hard to see life past the wilderness season. It's hard to see that proverbial light at the end of the tunnel when you're walking through the wilderness season. But as we'll continue to see this morning, there is a season that happens after the wilderness. And what we see the pattern in scripture today is surprisingly and perplexingly, the season that follows the wilderness can be a season of ministry. We're going to read in a minute from Matthew chapter 4, but, but in Matthew chapter 3 to lay the groundwork, we see where Jesus goes to John at the Jordan River and is baptized. If you've read the story, Jesus comes out of the water and the Bible says the heavens open, the Spirit of God descends upon Jesus like a dove and God says from heaven, this is my dearly loved son who brings me great joy or with whom I am well pleased. So look at Matthew chapter 4 verses 1 and 2. It says, then Jesus was led by the Spirit of God into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. For 40 days and 40 nights, he fasted and became very hungry. So right here, we see that Jesus is led into the wilderness. And three times from what we read in scripture, the devil tempts Jesus. And three times from what we see in scripture, Jesus resists those temptations, even quoting what we now know as the Old Testament. He quoted scripture. Jesus, in resisting the devil, quoted scripture there in the wilderness. Now, after Jesus resists all the temptations that we read about in Matthew 4, he says this, or this happens rather, in verse 17. It says, from then on, Jesus began to preach. Repent of your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Now, where, where, where was Jesus? In the wilderness. This will go a lot better if you just help me out a little bit this morning. Where, where was Jesus? He was in the wilderness. And what happened? He left the wilderness and began to preach. 
See, even for Jesus, we see the official launch of his recorded ministry here on earth takes place and starts after a wilderness season. See, sometimes we think that our wilderness seasons in life are just a waste of time. Like, I don't know why I'm just dragging my feet. I don't know why I'm just circling this mountain. I don't know why you got me out here for 40 years wandering. Just get me to the promised land already. What is happening? But but, but we, we know the story. God, as the heavens open and Jesus' baptism, this is my son who I'm well pleased. And each time that the devil tempts him, he says, if you are the son of God. Listen, sometimes in the wilderness is where God affirms who we are in him and who he is in us. Sometimes it's in the wilderness, in the slow phases of life, in the difficult places, in the places that cause doubt in our life. Sometimes it's through the wilderness that we grow a dependency upon God that prepares us for the ministry that's waiting. See, the wilderness can be a benefit for us. And let me just real quick define ministry as it relates to us today. I don't want to talk about a ministry season that follows a wilderness. And some of y'all are like, I ain't called a ministry, so this message don't matter to me. Not so fast. Listen, when I'm, when I'm saying ministry, I'm not talking about solely working in a church. I'm not talking about solely being a missionary. I'm not solely talking about standing behind a pulpit or being a pastor. That's, that's not the only context in which ministry can happen. Okay, for a follower of Jesus, hear me today. If you catch nothing else, hear this. For a follower of Jesus, ministry is wherever you go. Jesus himself instructs us to go into all the earth, proclaiming the news of the gospel, making disciples and baptizing. Another way we could say that is no matter where you go on the earth, proclaim the gospel, share the good news of Jesus. Listen, that is not a job that is reserved for a pastor. That is not a role in the body of Christ that is reserved for an evangelist or a missionary. That is something that God calls all of us to partake in and all of us to be involved in. If you believe and follow Jesus, then your life is now ministry. If you've given your heart to Jesus, then you should be giving your life to Jesus as well, following his plans for you and following and sharing the love of Jesus. Listen, for a Christ follower, words like ministry and life should be used interchangeably. God has a plan for your life and a call upon your life, even if that means you will never lead a small group or a Bible study or deliver a sermon. God still has a call upon your life, ministry for you to take in, kingdom business for you to participate in. So listen, don't don't limit God and what he can do in your life, with your life, or through your life. Because I promise if you're open to him using you, he's going to. He's going to. Ministry is wherever you go. Next example. I don't plan to be long today. I just want to give you uh, from scripture where we see this pattern of ministry following wilderness and praise and encouragement for you today. In Samuel 16, we're going to read it here in a second. But we see where, where God sends the prophet Samuel to anoint a new king. God gives Samuel instruction to connect with Jesse because one of Jesse's sons, the Bible says that the God tells Samuel is going to be the next king. So Samuel goes and he sees seven of Jesse's sons, but yet God does not pick any of them to be king. Look at 1 Samuel 16, verse 11 and 12. It says, Then Samuel asked, Are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse replied, but he's out in the fields watching the sheep and goats. Send for him at once, Samuel said. We will not sit down and eat until he arrives. So Jesse sent for him. He was dark and handsome with beautiful eyes. And the Lord said, this is the one, anoint him. Listen, that youngest son that Jesse was referring to is who we know as David, the same David that would defeat Goliath. He's the youngest son that was out in the fields that day. So where where was David? Where was David? In the wilderness. It says in the fields watching the sheep, we have to understand geographically, this wasn't some well-maintained, plush, green, pasture type of farm that he was on. No, no, geographically, David was watching the sheep in the wilderness. And what happened? David was called from the wilderness and anointed to be king. See, again, call followed the wilderness. The call of God, the plan of God came out of a time in the wilderness. So listen, if you find yourself in wilderness today, 
be encouraged. We've already seen the example where John was in the wilderness, but yet received a word from the Lord. We see where Jesus was led to the wilderness before his, his recorded ministry on earth began. We see that David was in the wilderness before his moment of calling. One more example today. Look with me in Exodus chapter 3, verse 1. One day, Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led the flock far into the and came to Sinai, the mountain of God. Where did he lead his flock? The wilderness. But not just the wilderness, it says far into the wilderness. Far into the wilderness. See, see, sometimes we, we can believe the lie of the enemy to say, your season is way too crazy for God to use you. You're way too far into the wilderness for God to have any plans for you. You're way too far backslidden for God to still have a plan of God upon your life. You're, you're into way too many bad things for God to even consider using you. See, Moses went deep into the wilderness. Not just on the edge, he was deep in that wilderness moment. Listen, you may be deep in depression, deep in discouragement, deep in anxiety, deep in confusion. You may be deep into whatever wilderness moment that you're walking through in your life. But don't be discouraged, don't lose heart, don't quit. Because this may be the moment that you're ready to hear something from God that brings you out of the wilderness and sends you into something. Look at verse 2. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him. In a blazing fire from the middle of a bush, Moses stared in amazement. Though the bush was engulfed in flames, it didn't burn up. See, Moses was in the wilderness. And what happened? He encountered God and stepped into ministry. Stepped into the plan of God. Listen, the word of the Lord for you today is don't die in the wilderness. Don't give up in the wilderness. See, the only thing that will stop you from getting out of the wilderness is if you choose to stop in the wilderness. As if you just decide, you know what? I was going to kick rocks and stay here. Then, then you'll stay there. And this word won't mean anything for you. The, the children of Israel, it was their fault that they were in the wilderness. Let me, let me back up. It was not the children of Israel's fault that they were in the wilderness. God led them out of slavery, and the wilderness was the moment in between slavery and freedom. Okay, catch this this morning. It was not the Israelites' fault that they found themselves in the wilderness. What was their fault is that it took them 40 years to get out of it. Listen, we can't shake our fist at heaven and be mad at God when we reject obedience and we don't do what the Bible says, but instead we do the opposite of what the Bible says, and we're stuck in the wilderness for 40 years. That's not God's fault, that's our fault. And sometimes in life, what we need to do painfully is just take some responsibility and say, you know what, God? It's not your fault that things around me have been going terrible. It's not your fault that everything in life feels delayed. It's not your fault that, that I'm not where I feel like I'm supposed to be. God, maybe I have a part in this. Maybe I haven't been obedient. Maybe I haven't been taking it seriously. Maybe I haven't been doing what I need to do in my relationship with you to actually get out of this wilderness. Listen, don't die in the wilderness. Don't give up in the wilderness. The Bible says don't get weary in well-doing for at the proper time you will receive a harvest if you do not give up. Listen, purpose is coming in your life. The plan of God is unfolding in your life. There's a, there's a season of ministry that you are being prepared for in Jesus' name. So what do we do while we're in the wilderness? I'd encourage you today, don't wait for the wilderness to end. See, if you read into the scriptures that, that we've talked about today and read into their stories, you'll see something. John was proclaiming the gospel in the wilderness. And in the wilderness, he received a message from God. Jesus, from the story we read, was quoting scripture in the wilderness. David was defeating fierce enemies like lions and bears and was leading his father's sheep in the wilderness. Moses found the mountain of God in the wilderness. 
and encountered God in the wilderness. What I'm saying through all of this is don't wait to exit the wilderness to see God move in your life. Don't become immobilized and paralyzed and stuck in the wilderness. But instead, stay faithful in the wilderness. Seek God in the midst of your wilderness. Because God can use the wilderness as a training ground, as a launching pad. It can mean calling for you and not quitting for you. So now I, I, wanna, I know this is, this is very short for us today. But I'm going to close with just a simple thought before we pray together and have a moment for the Lord to just step in maybe to our wilderness today. But have you ever wondered if you would survive in a survival like scenario? Have you, ever, have you ever played that out in your mind? Like I used to just love survival shows. I went through like a part of life where like I just, if it was a survival show, like I was watching them, right? And I was believing them, which, you know, turns out reality TV is not very much reality. But I would wonder sometimes, like, okay, like if I was, you know, driving somewhere and the car breaks down and suddenly I find myself in the middle of the forest by myself, like, right? Like I've played through that scenario of how would I be able to do it? Would I be able to survive in that type of situation? Whenever you see it happen in the snow or in the cold, they say, move slowly so that you don't sweat. Because if you sweat, then mix with the cold, like you're going to die quicker. And I'm like, well, I'm going to be out. Because I could be in the snow in a tank top and your boy's going to be sweating. Like, I just sweat. That's what I do. Always have. So as long as I don't get stuck outside somewhere in the cold season, I may have a chance to make it. Okay? But but if if I get stuck in the cold, there's going to be a pastor popsicle somewhere. Like, I ain't going to make it, y'all. I ain't going to make it. But I used to love watching those shows. And there's always a few things that you'll notice in those shows that they prioritize if they're caught out in the wild, if they're in a survival type of situation in the wilderness. They try to build a fire. They try to build a shelter. And they try to look for food and water. Simple. Simple. Fire, shelter, provision, sustenance, food and water. Right? Three things. Real simple to get through some type of survival situation. So listen, if you find yourself in the wilderness today, really, really simply and practically today, I encourage you, build a fire. And what I mean by that is seek the Holy Spirit of God, the fire of God in your life. If you find yourself in the wilderness, don't be tempted to isolate. Don't be tempted to pull away from the presence of God. Listen, understand that the wilderness sometimes, it's not a punishment from God upon your life. Listen, yes, our actions have consequences, and sometimes we, we have made the bed that we are sleeping in, right? Sometimes it is on us, and we have done some things that have caused us to end up in the place that we're in. But understand that the wilderness is not sent as a punishment from God. So if you find yourself in the wilderness, that's not God rejecting you. That's not God abandoning you. So resist the temptation to withdraw from God in that type of moment. Instead, press deeper into God. Pursue the Holy Spirit of God, the fire of God. The one who baptizes by fire. If you find yourself in the wilderness today, find shelter. What I mean by that is stay connected to your church and your church family. Sometimes in the wilderness, it's, it's easy to be alone. It's easy to feel discouraged. It's easy again to push away from people in your life. Listen, don't let wilderness cause you to drift away from shelter or the covering that God provides through church and through family. And finally, if you find yourself in the wilderness today, find food and water. Don't stop reading the Bible and drinking in his goodness. So listen, my encouragement to you today is that the wilderness doesn't have to end you. But God can use the wilderness to send you. Listen, I realize the word's not for everybody today. I realize that. Listen, if you find yourself in a place of wilderness right now in your life, understand now is the time to press into God, seek the Holy Spirit, be connected to your church family and to your church, read the Bible, drink in the goodness of God, because maybe, just maybe, if you're walking in the path of obedience, maybe what he is ready to do 
is have you go from wilderness to a season of ministry. And listen, I don't know what that looks like for your life. I don't know what that means for you. Only God can, can, can tell you what that is. Only God can tap you on the shoulder, tap you on the heart and say, this, this is what I have for you to do. It may be as simple as praying for somebody in a grocery store. It may be going to another country. It may just be being a, a godly teacher exactly where he's planted you to teach. The call of God is for you to pursue the presence of God and find out. But be encouraged today that just because you're in the wilderness does not mean you're going to stay there. But a, a season of ministry is what God is going to call you into, I believe, for some of us in this room, in Jesus' name. I just want to pray over you right now. Father, in Jesus' name, for those in this room, for those online and listening later, Lord, and I know we say that a lot, Father, but I know that we have a lot of people connected to this church, that give to this church, that love this church, that may even live states away. So, Father, for every person right now, Lord God, hearing these words, Father, I pray that they would know your presence right now, if they find themselves in the wilderness. God, if there's areas of their life that are discouraging, depressing, confusing, heavy, Lord God, I pray that they would, they would see your streams in the desert place, according to your word, God. That they would see your presence show up, Heavenly Father, right where they are. Lord God, I pray in Jesus' name for some in this room, Lord God, for some hearing these words, Lord Jesus. I believe that you're preparing a season of ministry, a season of calling them out of the wilderness, a season of them getting ready to do your work, Father. In Jesus' name. Lord, that you would call them from their slumber. You would call them from the wilderness. You would call them from the place that the enemy has tried to have them pinned down. You would call them from the place where their own bad decisions and disobedience has had them stuck in. And we would say today, no more. But in Jesus' name, God, as we walk in obedience to you, Father, seeking your spirit, seeking your presence, connected to our church family, God, reading your word, drinking in your goodness, God, that we would see the season of ministry that you have prepared for us, God, that you showed us today through the life of John, through the life of Jesus, through, through the life of Moses, through the life of David, that sometimes when we are in our wilderness, God, that is the moment that you call us. Lord, help us to be ready for that. Help us to be faithful in the small things, faithful in the wilderness, God. That we may hear you call to us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And before Cody shuts the live stream down, uh, th this, this is part one this morning. Part two will be next week, and I already tell you the sermon title. It's called Monday Missionary. But this is just the launching point for what God is going to have for us next week. So listen, again, if you are in that wilderness place, man, I just pray that you would stay encouraged, get into your word, get into the family of God, pursue the spirit of God, and know that the wilderness is not the end for you, but in Jesus' name, and there's a season of ministry that you're about to be called into. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. We love you. God bless you. Don't forget.